Each year in the spring, our members vote for 10 organizations for the Share the Plate program. And this month, the Share the Plate recipient is NAACP Lincoln Branch. Their president, Dr. Dwayne Mays, is here to tell us a little bit more about their work. Welcome, Dr. Mays. Thank you. And, and first of all, let me thank you for last year's uh, donation that you made. We were able to fund three students to for scholarships and one thousand dollars each, and so we're, we're we're very happy because we were a little nervous because of the pandemic and uh, the problem that we were having in raising funds for for the students. And certainly, I want you to to know that the students certainly appreciate. They were very very good students, and and who we feel would do well. Wonderful. I appreciate that. Yes, so uh, right up front, I want to say that our goal this year uh, is to raise at least as much as we did last year. I believe that we raised enough for one of the scholarships, and um, that yes. is um, certainly our goal again this year uh, to be able to help you out in that way. I know that um, there have been uh, challenges with, for example, having fundraising events or some of the the normal um, avenues that you would raise money during the year. I'm guessing that the banquet is on hold right now, again, for this year. Yes, it is. And possibly, uh, probably we will not be able to, to have that banquet as we usually do, but we always look forward to it because it was an opportunity to not only raise money for the scholarship fund, but to interact with the community. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, we probably talked about some of this last year, but, um, there are, uh, new people that will likely be watching this video. So I wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit more about your background with, um, the Lincoln branch chapter, how long you've been involved and that sort of thing. I've been a member of the Lincoln branch in WCP for more than 20 years. I served as the treasurer for the uh, chapter for about 17 years and I've been the president. This is the third year and enjoyed uh, and, and enjoyed the challenge and also the opportunity to work with people in our community to do and to meet some people that uh, normally I would not meet and to hopefully help in the community. Of course. And so um... I know there's one project that you're working on with Nebraskans for Peace, is that correct? Can you tell us a yes, little bit more about we, that? We have a Truth and Rec Reconciliation project. It's a history of, of Lincoln and uh, Nebraska that deals and looks at it through the lens of uh, ethnic groups, uh, African-American, the uh, Native American, uh, the Latino, uh, the uh, Asian, and the uh, new arrivals or new persons uh, in our community who are from uh, different places around the world. Okay. And the first layer and, of that is to do the research on the history, right? And just what, what has happened? Yes, we, we've done... Uh, uh, looked at the bibliography and studied the bibliography and we published that and it's it's available through the University of Nebraska okay and which uh, we have more than 700 references that we we've, we've uh, uh, explored there and we're in the process at this point in uh, funding uh, persons to write each of those uh, five sections uh, we have chosen a person to write the African American section. Uh, we've chosen a person to write the uh, Native American section and the editor, who overall editor for 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 the documents. And we've we are, I feel we're well on our way in that process. And we're also at this particular time, we are raising monies to fund that those uh, uh, writings. Each one of those five sections, we are, are have a ten thousand dollars stipend for the writer of that section to help to support that particular writer 
and uh, so we 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 are funding two right now. We've just approved two, and we're great looking for that third great. third one, which would be for the Latino group. Uh, we're looking for that person. We are in. Hopefully, we'll be interviewing that person soon. Great. So do I understand? So we have some. We Sorry, go, I apologize. Go right ahead. I was just going to ask you, am I right that there's matching funds right now from a donor? Yes, we've, we have a $10,000 uh, challenge grant that we have, and we are uh, seeking funds to, to match that $10,000 grant uh, so that we can further uh, uh, be able to fund the, the, the writers for this, okay. uh, these sections. And and we also we've we've uh, submitted a grant uh, informational grant, but you know that takes some time, and so we're we're trying to get this underway, and we don't want it to we don't want to drag it out for a long time, and we're trying to get most of the writing done this year, mm -hmm. and so if we can get most of the writing done this year, and to try to wrap it up next year. Uh, so that that's that's our goal, and well, certainly uh, money. Well, to finance that is 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 a, a real challenge because uh, we don't have uh, a lot of big donors that support us. Right, and, and that's that's the uh, that's usually happened with uh, organizations like NAACP and. A civil rights type organization and Nebraskans for Peace as well. And so we are working together on this to try to get it accomplished. It's a, it's a big task, but we are, I feel that we're making good progress on it. And thanks to uh, persons who, who have uh, volunteered, uh, who come together with us and help us and have offered suggestions and offered material, tell us about material uh, that uh, would be helpful. Here we're looking at the, through the lens of, uh, you know, most of the, uh, the history, historical information that we see is information that uh, is written through the eyes of uh, persons who are not people of color. If it, okay. So what we've okay. tried to do here is to be able to individualize that and uh, explore, and we are finding information. Persons have offered information that's not written or not in the uh, 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 the the literature. And so we're okay. hoping to bring that out because one of the I tell you one of the experiences that one person was going to uh, going to a classroom, and it was during the African American History Month, and she was asked to, to give a presentation and she soon realized that she could talk about Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King and many other uh, famous uh, persons. But when it came to the local history, mm -hmm. there was not much to be found. Right. And so, it, it, and that's true. One of the things that I learned within the last year is that was an African-American newspaper here in Lincoln from about 1946 to 1953. Oh, wow. And I didn't know that. I've been here in Lincoln for 40 years and I didn't know that. And, and, but we found some of those issues and some of the issues that uh, things that they talked about and the, the paper was geared toward uh, talking about issues that were important to people, to the black people within the, the Lincoln community. Uh huh. And did you um did you find copies? Did you say of the paper? We had found some in the archive. Uh, the The National Archive had a few issues that that were were recorded or that they have stored. Uh, wow. Electronically, <clears throat> and I don't know if we found many hard copies that, uh, currently, but. Uh, we also found some family members who knew something about uh, the persons who, who, who were writers in there. That's exciting. Well, yes, and I, I, 
I'm hoping that um, you have success finding the the last uh, writer that you need. Um, I'm guessing that if we know someone from the Latino community that would be interested, we should send them your way uh, yes, soon. We would, <laughs> we, would, we would hope so. And if you know someone who would be a strong writer for the Asian community, uh, we would we would uh, like that as well. Okay. And for new arrivals, uh, persons, um, there are many different groups there. And so we have not completely decided on how we can best write that one because there's so many different groups that will sure. be involved there. But we we have some ideas and we have a stern team that, that's working very hard to, to uh, an impressive group uh, that's working very hard to to uh, steer out, uh, chart out how we might accomplish this uh, task. Yeah. Uh, so it, are there ways that um, members and friends can be involved other than a contribution? I know, you know, at this point, the scholarship is really important and, and uh, that is, you know, one of our goals, but I'm always curious if there are are other ways that people can get involved, but it's really challenging during the pandemic also because a lot of in-person things aren't happening. Well, we have not met in person in, in quite some time, but we've been able to accomplish a lot by uh, meeting virtually. And we have, in fact, we have a meeting tomorrow night virtually and, and it's uh, the steering team and to, to try to, assure that things continue to go on and meet with the groups and meet with the writers and to try to find out what they need and uh, supply what they need in order to, to, to be, uh, so that this will be successful. And we have some very, uh, so far we've been very fortunate in, in, in selecting writers. These persons have a reputation for writing and have are very well known within the community for their writing and for their, their research. And so that is very encouraging. And as we look at the uh, uh, Latino writers, uh, which we are, are looking toward interviewing now, we think that we have some very good uh, scholars who, would, who will, uh, uh, would be interested, who are interested in, in doing that. Particular oh, okay. and so we and we're still open for persons who who uh, may be interested uh, in that that particular uh, writing as well as for the other ones that we have not chosen writers for. Sure. But we want to. We also are will have some uh, researchers who will support these writers, and they are giving us a small stipend to uh, work with the actual writers in doing some of the research and helping the writer to get what they need and, and to kind of speed things along as well. Sure. And um, do I understand that those are um, primarily grad students? Those, the, right, the, right, the writers are not grad students at this point. The even interns. Though we, I mean, but the interns, yeah. yes. They, yeah. would, they would be the grad students. They could be an undergrad student, uh, depending on on their level of maturity within their uh, academics. Okay, that might be something that um, you know, folks might know someone or be interested themselves. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say joining the the Lincoln branch as a member also would be a way to perpetuate the ongoing relationship and connection. Um, I didn't look it up. Uh, I admit I didn't look up what the membership level is, but um, that seems like a way that um, we could stay connected. And I know that there um, have been in the past and are now members of our church that are serving on the board of directors. Um, so that has yeah. been an, an important um, um, connection for us as well. That, and that has been very important to us because we look forward to support from your church and, and, and members of your church in helping us to uh, accomplish those, those goals that we set out. And we have a lot of uh, 
uh, issues that we are in community issues that we are uh, approaching or tackling or looking at, or because these are issues that have uh, are issues that tend to uh, stifle the, especially the community of color and and the, the low income part of our, our uh, community. And one of the things that we are hoping to become involved in uh, more in is is the uh, low income housing and the need for that and what we can do. And we're, we'll be searching out where we can best uh, uh, help along to facilitate uh, that uh, need uh, within our community. Wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. Um, would you like to share more about the scholarship recipients or is that to, uh, last year you told us a little bit about a couple of them and I'm not sure if um, you'd like to do that again this year. Yeah, well, the scholarship, we've had scholarship recipients over the years. Some are in, uh, who are uh, doctors, mm -hmm. medical doctors. Uh, some are, are university uh, professors, and we've had some that are, are, are still in the university. Uh, in fact, I talked with one young, one, one mother who was telling me that her, her daughter was a recipient and that her daughter is in med school and she'll be graduating sometime later this year. And we always like to hear those kinds of things because uh, we kind of take those things uh, with pride, meaning that we know this particular person and someone saw something in them early in life and encouraged them and mm -hmm. they are ending up or they will be a great asset to our community and the community around the world. That's wonderful. Well, we were really, really pleased that we were able to help with that and, and are going to be able to again this year. Is, um, is there anything else? That... Yeah, go Incidentally, ahead. Incidentally, the, the, the three that were selected last year are in the universities, and and uh, I I think there are two in universities in Minnesota, one here at UNL, and we we always try to we try to follow up on them. It's very difficult. <laughs> they're young people, and that they're sure. <laughs> about their life, but we we try to follow up as much as we can because. We want to be able to to tell those students or to encourage those students who might apply what they can do uh, and how they can achieve as well. And we've had some very good uh, uh, students that have applied and uh, who are become are successful. So of course we, we feel yeah, like course. we're doing something yeah. right there. That's awesome. Well, um, I don't. I would normally ask what else is coming up in the near future, but I think you know, honestly, a, a lot of things are on pause right now. So um, we mm -hmm. understand that, and and um, it's sort of the same for everyone right now. We're just on pause and waiting to ride out this last wave um, of the pandemic or see what happens next. So. Um, the yeah, really pandemic, the pandemic, yeah, the pandemic has caused us to approach things differently, but we mm -hmm. haven't stopped. Meaning right. that we still meet. We have not missed a meeting since the, during the pandemic, uh, and that's been say two years. We have, yep. so we haven't missed a meeting, and we still uh, have uh, the membership is still functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, we always we're always looking for. Uh, more members, uh, members who will are willing to work with us and work within. We work within our confines. We yeah. have a lot of people who are retired, like me, uh, but uh, who feel like that they still have something to contribute. And we we look forward to that because many of the persons who are in the organization or are people who are with retired teachers. Uh, city and federal employees and from all walks of life and, mm -hmm. and we, we we look forward we we are still working with the uh Lincoln public schools and trying to uh help with uh students 
especially students of color who uh, may need help and, and encouragement, as well as uh, with uh, teachers and, and we can support them and the school system, uh, because a lot of these persons who retired were in the school system who understand what's right. going on in the school system and certainly want to support and uh, make sure that things are, are continually done well. Right. Yeah, I think you talked a little bit about that last year with the officers, the um, in-school officers and their their standards that they use. And just looking at um, the rates of um, incidents compared yes. to the percentage of um, BIPOC individuals in a particular school. Yes. And, and we, we it, it curr currently we're working with the uh, Lincoln Public School to do an in-depth study of, of what can be done and what should be done with, with those incidents and those uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, where standards there where, where mm -hmm. students of color are, are lagging uh, right. behind other students within the school system. And what, we, what can be done to uh, narrow that gap? Right. And I mean, I'll just say as a parent of a child that's in the Lincoln Public Schools, I've noticed that um, from what I've heard from other parents also, there's a there's some pretty stark differences um, between different schools about how they handle things. And I um, I think some of the schools are doing a great job and others, um, there's always room for improvement, but um, sure. I have noticed that that there's a there's some different standards and it would be nice to to um, have that be consistently at a high level, <laughs> right? So. Yes. And one yeah. of the things that we're, we're, we're also pushing and looking forward to is trying to bring in more teachers uh, that encourage Lincoln Public Schools and to help Lincoln Public Schools as, as much as we can to have a, a more teachers of color within the, uh, the administration there because when it has been shown that if a child has a uh, teacher of color within as a as a person within it it improves their their learning ability because, and their exposure yep i've seen some studies about that and you know people asking you know when's the first time in your schooling career that you had a a person of color as your teacher and it's shocking to me um sometimes to see the answers and sad it's well, sad because yeah, representation it, matters and role models and, and all that my uh i had two children to go through lincoln public schools and i think only one of them had a teacher of color believe it or not. And that's, that's, that's sad to say. It is sad. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like to share about uh, before we close out for the, for the day or anything you can think well, of? Nothing that I can think of other than to say that, that we, to again, thank you for, for this opportunity and we, certainly look forward to and look forward to working with you and Unitarian Church uh, in any way that we possibly can. Thank you for your support. Same. Um, if you're watching this online or in person, I'd like you to consider a contribution to the NAACP for Share the Plate. The easiest way to do that is to give through text giving. All you do is simply text UC Lincoln to 73256. That's UC Lincoln to 73256 and follow the prompts. You can also send a check before the end of the month to 6300 A Street and the zip code is 68510. Thank you very much for considering it. And thank you very much for being here with us today, Dr. Mays. Thank you.